right now. Been a little fidgety today, but let's see if this works. Uh, do you guys feel like you're in positive mode or key mode? What do you guys want to do? It's positive. All right. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, try key mode last class and uh. Yeah. All right, here we go. Rotational dynamics. <laughs> Velocity is momentum. Momentum times radius is uh, angular momentum. Is what actually what that could be. Force times time is an impulse. Right? But force times lever arm. Here, let me flip the screen. You guys can see this. Right. You guys remember uh, trying to turn a wrench, open a door, radial arm, cross with the force, and cross means you really only care about the perpendicular components. Right? You guys remember that? All right. Let's see. Uh, who who got it right? Got that. Oh, what's going on here? I'm not sure if uh it's flashing blue at the edges. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I think my screens are backwards from my screen share. Oops. All right. We got uh, uh ah, Gavin and Allison. Of course Gavin got that right. <laughs> it's easier to loosen that nut with a wrench if you do what? All right, all the above, right? These are a lot larger force, longer lever arm, and make sure that those uh, vectors are perpendicular. Yeah. So I'll increase your torque. I'll increase your torque. Uh, if a football is kicked through its center of gravity, what will the ball do? Yeah. Center of gravity, we're going to go with so it should actually move without rotating. Okay, right, flip over here and show you guys why. All right, so. Here's a football, it's all lined up, ready to kick. Now, if you kick it down here, is it going to rotate counterclockwise? If you kick it up here, it's going to rotate clockwise. If you kick it, bam, right through its center of gravity, it'll actually move without rotating at all, because there would be like no, uh, no torque on it. Gavin on five. Let's get ports. The resistance that an object has to changes in its rotational state of motion is called what?
of rotational inertia, right? Here, uh, flip over here. You guys remember this rotational inertia table? Right? Did you guys remember those two meter sticks that I passed around class a while back? Right? They had weights taped at different places, so they were the same mass, the same weight, but when you rotated them, they felt completely different, right? Because the mass di distribution was different, right? So that right there. Uh, tomorrow we'll do a whole lab on rotational inertia. Uh, so, resistance to change in state of motion in a rotational sense. Which has more rotational inertia, a bike wheel, like a ring, or a solid disc? Say same mass, same diameter. Um, big, big, yeah, now why would the wheel, like a ring, have more rotational inertia given uh, all of the same? So here's the wheel, like a ring, and here's the disc. Right? Now, you know, same mass, same diameter. Ah, because the the ring, like every single point is equidistant from this uh, rotating uh, axis. So every single point is mr squared. If you aggregate it, the whole thing is collectively mr squared. But the disk, see, some of the mass is distributed closer to that axis, so it, it has to be less. And if you run the math, it specifically ends up being half of what it is for the ring. It, it has half the rotational inertia. So if you get it spinning around that central axis, it's uh, like twice as easy to get this one spinning compared to this one. Okay, look at that. Here, you know what this is sort of related to, too, is uh, we're going to see this a few times today, this roll race. Right? Doesn't the ring have so much rotational inertia? It's really hard to get it going. And once it is going, it's hard to stop it too. Right? But it's going to lose this rate if they all start from rest. Right? Uh, hey, is, is that is this true? Also, would this play out the same if you change the masses and radial sizes of these things? Right? Like, what if you had a bowling ball next to a marble? Who would win, or would those tie? How many guys think a, a bowling ball and a marble, which are both solid cylinders, how many guys think that those, those would tie? Yeah, yeah, this is going to tie, right? right? Because it, it turns out it doesn't matter uh, exactly the rotational inertia, it just matters how the mass is distributed. Right? It's sort of like here, sort of like this. There's some questions going to come up about kind of like this too. Right? You guys remember the Galileo experiment? Galileo dropped both these things off the tower of Pisa, they fell together <laughs> at the round thing time. Right? Even though this guy has more mass and also more force, but those two are uh, like opposite effects, they cancel out, right? right? More force, more mass, right? Uh, yes. So it's, it's a similar idea here. Right? Uh, if you push all the mass out and get it to roll, then uh, that's always going to lag behind. Wow, we've got uh, Cody, Bryce, Allison, Danny, and Gavin. The lead. Which has more rotational inertia? <laughs> Yeah, okay, so if you keep your legs straight, wouldn't it be like uh, distributing your mass uh, far out from your center mass, right, which would actually be more rotational inertia? It, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a, is this right here, right? So here's like running with your legs straight. It's like like pushing your mass as far away from you as you can. Versus if you look running with your legs bent, it's not like bringing your mass closer to your own center mass, right? Which is more similar to like this condition, right? Compared to this one. Ah, so if you have your mass spread out, that's a huge rotational inertia. If you have your mass like bunched in, that's a smaller rotational inertia. Okay. Uh, you know, since we got the ice skater up, and there's some ice skater questions coming up here pretty soon. Okay. Oh, you guys remember this? She goes into a slow spin and then brings her arms in, she's going to spin faster. So what's conserved is angular momentum. That's conserved, which is the product of these two guys. So if one decreases, the other has to increase in response, right? Hey, uh, I got another question about the ice skater. Uh, which, uh, which frame, the left frame or the right frame, does she have more kinetic energy? I'm going to say the one on the right where she's spinning really fast, uh, more kinetic energy. Yeah, yeah, that one. One half i omega squared. Now, even though the i goes up, and, or sorry, the i goes down and the omega goes up, right, the omega is being squared. Right? That's one way to think of it. That's going to be more kinetic energy here compared to here. 
Here's another way you know it's more kinetic energy on the right. Because when she goes from the picture on the left to the picture on the right, this chance to pull her arms in, that, that takes some effort. That takes some force, doesn't it? Force time distance. I bet that means that she's doing some work. Huh. Yeah, dang. All right. Is she uh, doing some work? Right. To go from the picture on the left, picture on the right, she's putting energy, mechanical energy, into the system. It's pretty hard to pull your arms in. Right, right. All right, how are we doing points? Got Maya, Allison, Danny, Cody on fire, all for the second, and Gavin still holding on to the lead. Any solid cylinder will roll down an incline with greater acceleration than a hollow cylinder, if what? Uh, yeah, none of the above are necessary. Right? This is uh, here. this is what I was talking about before when I was saying. Uh, it doesn't matter exactly the mass or radial sizes of these things. It just matters how the mass is distributed, right? Um, a ring is always going to lose to all these other shapes, right? And what, what if you had different rings? What if you had like a like different size, different mass rings? Would those all roll side by side? Yeah, pretty much, right? Uh, same idea as like a bowling ball next to a marble will also roll side by side with each other because those are both solid spheres. Right? But yeah, a ring will always lose to all these other objects. All right, Nate, hop in the top five. Gavin's still in the lead. A gymnast moves from an extended position to a tough position. She would be decreasing her rotational inertia, uh, thereby probably also increasing her angular velocity if she was spinning it off. What about angular momentum? Would that be conserved? Yeah, that would be conserved, right? Uh, and that's a, let me flip my screen, you guys can get the visual one more time. Right. That's that right there, right? Going from left to right. Go to a tough position, you are uh, moving your mass towards your, towards the axis of rotation. All right, Gavin on fire. We got Cody, Maya, Danny, and Allison. Top five. When an ice skater pulls his hands in to turn faster, what's true? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, there you go. Right. So the moment of inertia would go down, the rotational speed would go up, <laughs> angular momentum is conserved, which is, yeah, all those are consistent with each other. There you go. All right. Uh, a large rotating cloud in space. As it shrinks, as it gravitates together, it rotates how? Is there any question about that? Why, why the answer is the red one? All right. Uh, okay. 
thank you. Uh, so we got, oh uh, yeah. Um, I think it's in the right. Uh, oh no, that's just that. That's for you guys. Oh. All right. All right, uh, yeah, got Gavin on fire in the lead. Got Maya, Cody, Allison, Nate, top five. Uh, when one person ooh, leans toward the center of the seesaw, what will that person's end do? <laughs> So let's say I got a couple of friends on a seesaw. Um, I'm going to use this fulcrum as the pivot point, although you guys know from your lab, you can really pick any point as the pivot point. But one reason I really like this is because there's a huge upward force here that you can ignore if you treat this as the pivot, kind of like push down the hinges of the door that causes no torque itself. Okay. So looks like this guy's causing it counterclockwise, this guy's causing clock clockwise, everybody's all balanced. Torque is R cross F. Okay. Now I'm going to take this guy on the left, and I'm going to scoot him in towards the center. It's not going to do like this. So since torque is R cross F, smaller radial arm means a smaller torque. So now we're going to go clockwise like that. Okay. Ah, got Nate, Cody, Maya, Allison, move up to second, Gavin's still on fire. To turn a stubborn screw, it's best to use a screwdriver. This is not a wrench, this is a screwdriver. Careful about that. I don't screwdriver. If it was a wrench, you would want a long wrench, but this is a screwdriver, you want it to be wide. So here's your screwdriver, right? You got your hand around the screwdriver, you guys can see that? Okay. And then there's a frictional force between, uh, say, your hand and the, uh, in, in the handle. Okay. So R cross F, this radius crossed with that force gives you a torque. Okay. okay, you want a wide handle that gives you a bigger lever arm in terms of the torque. Gives you more torque. All right, Cody, move up the second. Gavin's still on fire. A ring and a disc roll down a hill together. Who reaches the bottom first? <laughs> soon but you guys remember this uh, oh you, you guys do know this is a poster hanging in my room right you guys see it over there kind of in the corner is that All right that's this right here uh, um also i gave this guys uh here you guys remember i gave you some some notes a while back looks like this All right so this is uh here it's one of the slides anyway All right that's this right here won't this uh solid cylinder always be the ring even like regardless of mass and radial size, right? Because this one has its mass distributed closer to the axis that it's rotating about. Yeah, that ring is always gonna lose that race. Who got those points? Cody. A good explanation for why a ball gains speed as it rolls down an incline. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, this would all be good, right? right. So four sacks on it um, causes a torque. Now, you can only have a torque if you also have a static friction force, right? Um, and and I, care, I care about static friction because if it was kinetic friction, it'd be sliding, that would be taking energy out of that system. But if it's static friction, then the acting is conservative force. And that static friction and the weight act at uh, different locations, which allow for a torque to be set up uh, for a rolling. Got Danny in the top five, got Maya, Allison, Cody on fire, got him still in the lead. At different orientations, the cams provide different, oops, but you're pulling on that rope on the right. You guys imagine you're pulling on the rope on the right. So yeah, so the the lever arm would change, the, right? The lever arm would change as you're pulling it. And if you did want a constant torque, you would have to pull the different forces for that happen to feel all wonky, wouldn't it? Right. So both of those are true. All right, uh, Danny, picking up some points. If you pull the stream, say you know, there's a there's a floor down here, there's a point of static friction right here, and I'm pulling to the left. I'm pulling to the left. Which way that thing gonna rotate? It's full, it's full. Oh, cool. Why would it go towards it? Or right, here, I will prove it to you guys about this. Got a spool, got a string, right? got a point of static friction down here, right? Need this point of static friction. How's it work, right? I'll pull this thing. Well, oh, look, it's going the way I'm pulling it. Pull it to the left, it goes to the left, right? Uh, from, from my point of view, it looks like it's going uh, counterclockwise, right? That's it. Right. Hey, what about this? What if I flip, flip this whole thing upside down? <laughs> You guys see the strings like uh, on the under, underside right now? Set. Okay. What happens if I pull now? I'm gonna go the same direction, I think. I'm gonna see what you guys think about that. That's the next question. Uh, Allison and Gavin, more points. Right. So there's still a floor down here. There's still a point of static friction right where my mouse cursor is. Pulling to the left. Uh, yeah, right. It should still go to the left. Right. Now the um, in, in both cases the static friction is acting to the right. I'm pulling to the left. But here, let's check this out. Oh, look at that. It still goes the same way I'm pulling it. Right. So there's still a net force in the direction that I'm pulling. Now, I don't get the, the pulling force is not the net force because the, again, there's a static friction force point, point the other way. Okay. But um, pull to the left, the net force is to the left. Okay. It's still gonna go counterclockwise. There's still a, a small radial arm right here. There's, a, there's still a torque, uh, counterclockwise type torque. All right, got Danny, Allison, Maya moving up, Cody, Gavin in the lead. Uh, where should a 30 Newton weight be placed so that the meter stick will be balanced at the 50 centimeter mark? Ooh, two winners, two winners. Let's flip over here, check this out. So 
Okay, so here's my fulcrum. Um, I'm, I'm gonna treat this as the pivot, right? We got 10 Newtons acting at, ooh, you guys saw this at the 20 centimeter mark, which makes this lever arm how many centimeters? 30, right? So R cross F, torque is R cross F. Got 30 centimeters crossed with 10 Newtons. Is that called 300 Newton centimeters of torque? Right, 300 Newton centimeters, right? 30 times 10. So what would you need to balance that with a clockwise torque? Well, I would need, how about 10 times 30, right? Because it was 30 newtons was told. You would need that to be 10 centimeters out. Right? Since it's clockwise, I'll call that a negative torque, and it'd be negative 300 newton centimeters, right? Just like that? Is that exactly what? Is that what? Hi, Allison, move it up. Cody Gavin stole the weed. In order to increase this rotational inertia, a tightrope walker should carry a long stick. Would it increase your rotational inertia? Kind of like the idea of, uh, as if you're trying to balance a meter stick, uh, uh, right? right. That, that's not too too hard to do, right? Because um, because this thing's so long, right? It's fast as 50 centimeters up from the, from its pivot point, right? That has a huge rotational inertia, right? So same thing here. If I'm going tightrope walking, I think I want to carry this along with me, right? It'll give me a, a lot of rotational inertia, right? Or, but something uh, pretty massive and maybe several times as long as that gives some rotational inertia going on. Ooh, points for many. All right, and last question for the win. See, a short pendulum has more rotational inertia than a long pendulum. Same mass. So true or false? Ooh. All right, let's get that pretty fast. Let's flip over here and run this, and then we'll go back to the uh, gonna check out the winner's podium. So you guys know that rotational inertia is the sum of mr squared, but for a single point, I can just call it mr squared, right? Okay. So get some pendulum set up. I have a short one right here. Mass of a long one right here. Same mass. Ah, okay. so mr squared. Here, the length of the pendulum could be like r, right? Hey, what if that's r and this is like 2r? You guys see, like, this could be double that. I know mean, it's pretty close, right? Double. Because if you double the length, you know, leave, leave the mass the same, but if you double the length, what happens to the rotational inertia? If this is i, this is how many times i? Four. Ah, right? Because the factor of 2b and squared, that would be four times, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right, all right, we're getting this. Ah, to the podium! With the bronze, Allison! With the silver, Cody! And the gold, Gavin! Yeah. Gavin. Yeah. Yeah. Runners up, Maya and Danny! Yeah. All right. Oh, I'm done, guys. I'm done. Okay. You literally won. Walk 